Welcome everybody to Maine's Native Turtles. We'll be getting started in just a few more minutes. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in in the chat window, or if you'd like to say something about Maine's Native Turtles as we're going along. Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us for Maine's Native Turtles. We're going to be getting started now. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box or send us an email later and we'll be happy to respond. Um, and we're going to go live now to Jade who is at Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. Good morning everyone and welcome. Again, my name is Jade and I'm an educator for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife here in Maine. And today we are at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. And here at the park, we have a lot of different types of Maine native animals. We have black bears and moose, um, different raptors, um, turtles, snakes, uh, bobcats and lynx, and many more. And all the animals that are here can no longer um, live in the wild on their own. So they're here because they were orphaned or injured. Um, in some cases, they were even illegal pets or they are um, so human dependent that they can't survive on their own in the wild. So they're here at the park. And if you'd like to learn more about the park, you can visit mainewildlifepark.com. Today's lesson is all about Maine's native turtles. And turtles have been on the planet for millions of years. 
the earliest turtles were larger than pickup trucks. And although today we have uh, much smaller turtles here in Maine, there are still some sea turtles um, that can be as large as cars. But the turtles here in Maine are much smaller. And there are a few characteristics that turtles share um, that makes them a turtle. So one of those um, things is that turtles are reptiles. That means they're cold-blooded. Another word for cold-blooded is they are ectothermic. And cold-blooded animals can only control their um, internal temperatures a little bit. They rely on their external environment to help regulate their body temperatures. So if they're too cold, they go and they bask in the sun. And if they're too hot, they'll go for a swim or find some shade. And um, all turtles are covered in scales. So I have a turtle shell here. And their shell is made of bone, but it is covered in scales. And the scales on their shells are called scutes. So each of these um, shapes on the top of the shell, that's called a scoot. And this one, um, this is from a turtle that has died, so there's no turtle inside. It's an empty shell. Um, and as it gets kind of older, those um, scales are starting to flake off. And these scales cover the body and protect them. And they shed and they grow with the turtle as the turtle um, grows and gets older. I have another shell here. This is a snapping turtle shell. It's much larger. And I want to show the inside here. So these uh, are the bones. Just one second, Jade. It seems our video is slowing down here. Just one second. Seems our videos go in the same way as the turtles, nice and slow. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Back to turtle Back shells. Back in action. Okay. Yeah. So here's a snapping turtle shell, and as you see, we still have those scoots, those scales on the top of the shell. But if we look on the inside, we can see these bones. So turtles actually have their skeleton fused to their bodies. So their shell and their bones are an extension of their body and these um, bones grow into their shells. So their ribs are fused to the top shell and the top shell is called the carapace. And then the bottom part of the shell, here, this is called the plastron and their sternum and their rib cage is fused to the bottom of that plastron. And their shell and their bones um, grow with the turtle as they grow. And like in the cartoons, you might see a turtle will hop out of its shell and run away. And that's not possible. So that shell is actually grown with them. Their bones are actually attached and fused into that shell. So it goes everywhere that they go. And turtles don't have teeth. They do have a very sharp, strong jaw and it is covered in keratin. And that jaw um, is very, very sharp and it grows and it replaces itself just like their scales do. So here's a snapping turtle. You can see there's no teeth, but it has that big beak. And I have a smaller turtle skull here. And the whiter, the kind of off-white color is the bone. And then the browner areas, that's that keratin that makes up the beak. And it's very, very sharp and that's gonna um, grow as the turtle grows with them. So the, the bone, the skeleton is made out of a different material than that beak is. So no teeth, but a very sharp, strong beak. Another thing that turtles do is they lay eggs. So turtles lay their eggs on land. They usually lay it in a sandy soil and needs to get some sunshine. It can be in a grass field or even on a lawn. So you definitely want to be careful and watch out um, and keep our distance from these turtle nests so we don't disturb those eggs. And around this time of year in the spring, you'll see turtles crossing the road. And these can be turtles that are um, wetland turtles leaving the pond to go lay eggs. Um, sometimes they're la more like terrestrial land turtles that are going to find a good spot that they know of. And unlike a bird egg, these eggs are actually a little bit softer. So the bird eggs are hard, but the turtle eggs are almost more like a rubber or a soft leather 
on the outside. So they're a little bit more fragile um, and they lay those eggs on land. And here in Maine, we have seven species of native turtles. That doesn't include sea turtles that do sometimes visit um, up the coast here in Maine. So we're gonna talk about the seven species of turtles, not including sea turtles. And our seven species here are the Blandings turtle, the wood turtle, box turtle, spotted turtle, musk, common musk turtle, the snapping turtle, and the painted turtle. And in the pond that's behind me here, this is where some of the painted turtles here at the wildlife park live. This is just one of the places at the wildlife park to see turtles. Um, just some one of the second other again, we lost you. Oh, I think we might be good. Yeah. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so in the pond behind me, this is where the painted turtles live here at the wildlife park. And it's just one of the places to see turtles here. Um, we also have a visitor center and that building has other turtle exhibits um, and we'll talk about all those different turtles as well just the painted turtles are here in the pond behind me and we have several species here at the wildlife park and again they are all non-releasable um, some of the reasons that they're here can include injuries usually those injuries are from vehicle collisions or other ways that they get injured um, they'll be surrendered by an owner so many turtles live up to 25 or 30 years or sometimes longer. And that is longer than most people are prepared to care for a pet. So you never wanna release pet turtles into the wild. It's very important. So if you have a pet turtle and you can't take care of it anymore, do not go release it into the wild. It's also illegal to take turtles from the wild. So if you stumble upon a turtle, you do not wanna remove that from its habitat. You wanna leave it where you found it. Um, it's illegal to take them from their habitat. And if you have any questions about that, you can also contact um, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife if you see a turtle and have any questions about it in the wild or maybe a pet turtle that you have questions about too. So we have two different groups of turtles. There are more aquatic turtles and there are more terrestrial turtles. And there are a few differences that you can see. So their shells look a little bit different. The dome shape versus a flat shape shell. So the aquatic turtles are gonna have a um, flatter, more streamlined shape to their shell for swimming. And then the land turtles, the terrestrial turtles have a more domed shell. They'll also have some different colors and that is for um, camouflage. So the aquatic turtles need to have camouflage for blending into the water more. And the land turtles have colors for blending, blending in on land more. They also have some different feet so the aquatic turtles are doing a lot more swimming. So they're gonna have more of a webbed foot. And then the land turtles don't need as much webbing on their feet or any webbing on their feet if they're not doing swimming. But both aquatic and terrestrial turtles um, need to lay their eggs on land. So no matter what, they have to go to land to um, lay their eggs. The first turtle that we'll talk about today, I have here with me, our Blandings turtle. This is a female Blandings turtle. And some of the distinguishing characteristics for a Blandings is this yellow chin. So you see that yellow throat and chin on the Blandings. They're usually about seven or ten to 10 inches long. She's a pretty big Blandings turtle. They also have this very um, helmet shaped shell. So that top shell, the carapace, is very helmet shaped. And if I get her close to you, you can see she has these tan speckles all over her shell too. Especially when her shell is wet and it's glossy, you can see those tan speckles a lot. And again, their shell's gonna be this black or brown and have those tan speckles. And it's very interesting. Most turtles, when they are scared, go inside of their shells. So it's also kind of important to note that she is very much out of her shell. She does not mind that I'm holding her and that is a good sign that she was probably someone's pet. She was not living in the wild or else she would be really freaked out by someone coming along and picking her up. But she wants to poke her head out and say hello and is not afraid of us or anything. So another adaptation that these um, landing turtles have is they have a partially hinged plastron. So the bottom of their shell has a hinge part to it 
So they can um, go inside their shell even more than some other turtles that don't have those hinges. They eat different tadpoles and aquatic insects. Sometimes they eat amphibian eggs. And Landing's turtles are an endangered species here in Maine. Um, they are endangered due to different development and habitat fragmentation, um, sometimes vehicle collisions as well. So if you ever see a um, Blanding's turtle, if you sight a Blanding's turtle, you wanna report that to the department because we wanna keep track of their populations um, and try and help those turtles out. And they're gonna live in a mostly aquatic habitat. Um, they live in marshes and vernal pools, different swamps and ponds and slow moving rivers and streams. So they're a more aquatic turtle. The next turtle we'll talk about are the painted turtles. And they, you can tell it's a painted turtle based on those red or yellow stripes that run down from their, the side of their bodies, from their head to their tail. And people thought that they looked like they had been painted. So that's how they get their name, the painted turtle. Some also call them the sun turtles because they're often seen sunbathing. They like to line up on logs like you can see in that bottom picture and sunbathe. Some people call them sun turtles. And they have their back feet are very webbed for swimming and their front feet are a little bit less webbed. They don't use them as much for swimming. But the males have long claws on their front toes and they use those to tickle the cheeks of the girl turtles. If the girl likes them, then they'll mate and they'll lay their eggs. So they use those little claws to tickle the girl's cheeks. And these turtles are also uh, mainly aquatic. So they eat different aquatic plants and a lot of invertebrates, tadpoles um, and small fish. And they live in, again in different wetland habitats like ponds and bogs and marshes or slow moving streams. And these turtles, they over the winter, they go into the bottom of the ponds in the mucky um, leaf litter and sediment on the bottom of the ponds. And they swim down there and they'll swim very slowly um, beneath the frozen um, water. And interestingly, these turtles actually breathe through their butts. So it's an interesting adaptation that they have. So when they're buried in the muck and down underneath the ice in the frozen water, they can breathe through their butts. And painted turtles look very similar to a non-native species, the red-eared sliders. So red-eared sliders are a common um, pet and again, when people will have this pet, they will then release it into the wild, which we should not be doing. And then these non-native red-eared sliders um, end up in, in Maine where they should not be. So again, never release your pets into the wild because um, they do not belong here in Maine. They are a non-native invasive species. Another aquatic turtle we have here in Maine is the snapping turtle. And this is Maine's largest turtle. They can be 15 to 20 pounds on average. So they're a very large turtle. They have long necks and tails and these thick bodies and long claws. They live in different marshes, streams, lakes, and sometimes even in brackish water, which is partially um, fresh and partially salt water. And snapping turtles have some cool adaptations. They have very special um, camouflaged bodies and these tongues that they use like a lure. So they have this pink tongue and when their bodies blend into the bottom, those fish see that pink tongue and they think it's a nice worm or something. And that's when the snapping turtle uses its very strong jaw and long neck to lunge and grab those fish to eat them. And a much smaller turtle than them is a musk turtle and they use some similar um, hunting adaptations that we'll talk about next. But these snapping turtles, they eat different frogs and fish. Sometimes they'll even eat small mammals like mice. And occasionally they'll even eat birds. So they'll, they eat a lot of different things with those big mouths, strong jaws and long necks for grabbing. Next turtle is the common musk turtle. And they are a very, very small species. So we went from the largest species in Maine to the smallest species. They're usually less than five inches long. And they have these two yellow stripes that run along the side of their face. And their shell is gonna be a solid olive or black 
kind of color. And these turtles are very difficult to find. They live in different ponds and shallow lakes or even uh, slow moving shallow streams, but they're so little and they blend in very well. So they're difficult to find. And they are very feisty little turtles. The adults are often very aggressive and they will bite in defense. So even though they're little, they pack a big punch. And their name comes from this musky, stinky odor that they can emit. And they're also commonly referred to as a stink pot turtle because they have that, that stinky, musky odor that they can emit. And they eat a lot of carrion. So they'll eat like deceased um, different animals, small fish, insects, snails, and also freshwater clams. The wood turtle is the next turtle we'll talk about. And some people call them old red legs due to these um, scarlet kind of orange red colored legs. And they're another medium sized turtle. So they could be up to um, 12 inches long, anywhere between six and 12 inches long. And I have a wood turtle shell here. So they have a brown shell and they have very deeply sculpted chiseled peaks. And that's partly how they got their name is from looking like they're kind of chiseled out of wood. And they also have these rings that look like the rings on a tree. So on these scoots on their shell, it looks like they are made out of wood and they have those rings like a tree, like on a tree. That's how they're called, that's why they're called wood turtles. And they also live in um, slow moving rivers and streams, but they like to live um, closer to the land. So they're gonna live on the land by these rivers and streams. They're a little bit less aquatic um, and more terrestrial. And their diet's gonna be different mushrooms, berries, slugs, and worms. So just like they're gonna be um, living on land, they eat some more foods. Um, their diet is more like things they're gonna find on land and less in the water. And this is a very intelligent species of turtle. And unfortunately, this makes them a very popular pet, which has hurt their populations in North in the Northeast. And here in Maine, they are a species of special concern. And again, that's because of the pet trade, um, also a loss of habitat and vehicle collisions. So if you see one of these wood turtles, you wanna report that to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife as well, um, because we're also concerned about their population. The other turtle I have here with me is the Eastern Fox Turtle. So he's showing us this hinged shell feature that he has. He's starting to poke out and you can see how that hinge opens up and closes. And they have um, these domed shells and they have a yellow or an orange pattern on their scoots. His is a yellow color. And they burrow under loose soil, leaves, or even in small mammal burrows to hibernate. And they eat different plants, berries, worms, and insects. So again, a more terrestrial species. And they are an endangered species here in Maine. So just like the Blanding's turtle, they're also endangered. They also fall victim to being pets. So they're often taken from their habitats for the pet trade. Um, habitat loss and vehicle collisions as well. It's believed that close to 50% of their population has declined here in Maine. So if you report, if you see any um, box turtles, that's another one to report to the department um, so we can keep track of their range, their locations and their population. And these, the first picture is that same box turtle here at the park poking his head out of his little exhibit there when we're feeding him and giving him water and we give him a little spritz every day to keep them nice and moist. And they live on dry land. They're gonna live in woodlands and fields. They can't swim, but instead they'll actually soak their bodies in shallow streams or puddles. The next turtle is the spotted turtle. And they are also smaller. They're gonna be four to six inches long. They have a dark, um, like black colored carapace with these bright yellow spots. And also their head and neck will have some bright colored spots on it. 
and when these turtles are in captivity or when we're studying them, um, we can use those patterns to identify and tell apart the different individual turtles because all their spots are different. And spotted turtles can live over 50 years and generally they'll live about 25 in the wild. And they have less webbing because they often live in much more um, shallow wetlands. They're not swimming in deep water as often. So they can swim, um, but they're not gonna swim in as deep of water as some of the other turtles. And they're gonna eat different insects, tadpoles and aquatic plants. And Maine is the very Northern limit of this um, species. So they're only found in Southern or sometimes Central Maine in slow moving streams, ponds, um, vernal pools and forested wetlands. So those are each of our different species of turtles here in Maine. And there are many different species and they also face a lot of different threats. And I talked about some of these um, such as habitat fragmentation. So this is development that reduces the available habitat um, and it can split up the habitat into these small um, little areas and the animals need to move around to different areas for survival. And so the habitat fragmentation also um, total habitat loss um, hurts different species of turtles, um, road crossings. So I said a lot of these turtles are being harmed by vehicle collisions when they're trying to cross the roads. Um, also illegal pets. So wildlife should not be pets. Um, and any wild animal removed um, from the population is no longer contributing to the wild population, and it means less wild turtles. And the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife work to protect and study wild turtles and protect their habitat um, so we can have these turtles in Maine for a long time. And how can you help these turtles? So I mentioned a few of these, but we'll go into a little bit more detail. So the one big thing is to not release your pet turtles into the wild. These turtles don't know how to survive in the wild. And the ones that do survive can actually grow bigger than the native turtles that were already wild there. And they'll outcompete with those wild turtles and hurt the wild turtle populations. They can also introduce some types of different bacteria or viruses that can also be harmful or kill our native turtles. Also, you can help with turtles crossing the road. If you see a turtle in the road, you wanna be very safe. Do not take that turtle home. It is most likely a female that is going to lay their eggs or they're heading home after laying their eggs. So you wanna use a lot of caution and trust that that turtle knows where she's going. So you don't wanna change her direction or pick her up and move her or bring her home. Just be very careful um, and trust that that turtle knows where it's going. And especially if you're um, a kid and you wanna help the turtle, get your parents help or something, because you wanna be really careful around the roads and with helping these turtles. A lot of them too can bite and things like that also. So you wanna be very careful with these turtles. And there's also a website, it's called wildlifecrossing.net slash Maine. And you can report turtles in the road to the Wildlife Road Watch. Especially if you think it's a rare turtle, um, then you can take a picture of it and report it so we can keep track of those turtles. And we talked about some of these different species in Maine that are rare turtles of species, rare turtle species. And we especially don't want to disturb them or move them from their habitat. So take a photo if you can and report it to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And these are all the different species here in Maine that are endangered, um, threatened, or a species that is of special concern. So I'd love to answer any questions now that have come in about turtles, um, if any questions have come in. So while we wait a second for questions to come in, um, there is a, um, some concern about how long these recordings will be available. Uh, we do not at this time have a any plans to take the recordings down um, and you can visit our website to find those recordings as well under our, our field trips tab on our website so they will be available but now is the time for any live questions you might have so if you do have a question please type it in the chat yeah if there's no questions yet um if we're waiting for questions to come in i can show you our turtles again i will 
scoop up our very friendly Blanding's turtle here. So again, this is a female Blanding's. And like I said before, we definitely very strongly believe that she was someone's pet because she is so fearless when it comes to being handled, um, which makes her a great ambassador for teaching about turtles. But of course it would have been ideal for her to be living out in the wild and having her own turtle family one day. So she's great to have here at the park, but would be even better if she was out in the wild. And somebody um, more has a comment, um, if you wanted to just talk about it again. I said, did I hear you correctly? Turtles can breathe through their butts. Yes, so that's a special adaptation for especially these um, aquatic turtles that will burrow or um, kind of cover and submerge their heads in the sediment in the ponds and in the leaf litter and everything. So they can actually pass air through their hind end, through their butts, to help them breathe when they're burrowed into those um, places where they're gonna be hibernating and resting over the winter here in Maine. And that seems to be it for our questions. Oh, no, here we go. We got another question. Um, do different types of turtles mate with each other? So different species. So, Species are broken up based on um, their ability to actually reproduce with each other. So the species um, do not interbreed with one another. Um, they, like only a box turtle will mate with a box turtle and only a blanding's turtle will mate with a blanding's turtle. Um, and there are some species outside of turtles that when they do, um, when they are able to breed with a different species, it creates a new species or a hybrid species, um, but none of the turtles here or none of our main native turtles that I know of have any um, hybrid species, um, but they can develop new species in that way, but it usually takes a very long time for those new species to evolve and um, be found. Just one second, bear with us. I just gotta fix the um, camera again, sorry. I guess turtle presentation causes the internet to slow. <laughs> um, here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, we do have a couple other questions. If you see a turtle on the road, can you help them cross the road? So like I said, you want to be very, very careful. Um, if it's going to be harmful to you or the turtle to um, help them, we don't want you to be in danger and we don't want to put the turtle in any more danger. If you are somewhere safe, um, one suggestion that I have heard is you actually use um, the floor mat from your car to safely help that turtle get in the direction that they are moving. So you never want to turn them around. Um, you always want to help them in the direction that they're going, but you want to most importantly make sure that you're staying safe and the turtle is safe. Um, so don't put yourself in harm's way. Just be very careful. Um, try and go around them. But if it's a busy road, um, especially, we want to be really careful and keep ourselves safe while we're trying to help those turtles. And I just want to add, if you also do find an injured turtle to um, call a local um, rehabilitator because that shell again is bone and it's going to need um, somebody who can provide essentially veterinarian care um, to help it heal. Um, another question is, are there any tortoises that are in Maine? Are they all turtles? I don't believe Maine has any native tortoise species. Um, I think we only have turtle species. Um, tortoise typically don't live um, in an aquatic environment, so they're not gonna be, um, they still need water to survive, but here in Maine, it is a lot cooler, wetter. Um, so I think we only have turtles. I don't know, Laura, if you know for sure, if we only have turtles, I don't know of any tortoise here in Maine. Yes, in Maine, we just have um, turtle species. Sometimes people will confuse our terrestrial turtles with tortoises, but there is some, some slight differences there. Um, but no, just, just different kinds of turtles. And somebody was wondering if you could um, go over the endangered and threatened species again, and you know, just in case someone were to find them. So I'll share that yeah, video definitely. again as well. Yeah, so we have this slide that has just the um, more rare turtle species here. 
So the first one is the blandings and the box. So those two are both endangered. And then the spotted turtle is um, threatened and the wood turtle is a species of special, um, special concern. So those four turtles are the ones that you really wanna keep an eye out. And if you're not sure and you do find a turtle, um, you can just take a picture of it anyway and send it in, um, even if you're not positive that it's one of those rare species. Um, it's better safe than sorry. So take a picture and send it in, even if you're not sure if it's one of those um, rare species that we're trying to help out. Yeah, that's that's great. And please remember, um, we always want to make sure we leave them in the wild where we find them, not to just dis disturb them. Um, and all the animals at the park are either surrendered or they were injured and non-releasable, that kind of thing. So, um, and then our only other question was, um, do we do um, these live, live videos often? Yeah, so we do these every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, we do them at 11 o'clock and we could be changing up that time a little bit or adding in some additional videos as well. But for right now, we have Tuesday and Thursday um, live videos, and then those recordings are also saved for watching later if you can't um, tune into the live video. And those are at mefishwildlife.com. That's where you can access the recordings, and you can also see the upcoming um, schedule of live videos coming up also. But they're on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. right now. And I added the link in the chat um, the, specifically to the virtual field trip so you can quickly access them and see what our upcoming schedule is. And that's all our questions. Perfect. So thank you all for joining us today. Those were some really good questions. Um, I hope you had fun learning about Maine's native turtles. And again, you can visit our website, um, mefishwildlife.com to see um, other virtual um, field trips, as well as different resources for activities you can do from home. Um, so thank you all again for joining us and I hope you have a good day.